Buongiorno, sono Francisca Tanner e sono la direttrice tecnica di Panagenda. Sono nata e cresciuta in Svizzera, ma era troppo piccola e fredda, così mi sono trasferita negli Stati Uniti e dopo un'isola tropicale nei Caraibi. Lavoro con le tecnologie IBM Lotus da 15 anni, risolvendo problemi di business attraverso tools e coaching. Sono sicura che avrete capito che non so veramente parlare italiano, ma spero che continuerete a seguire la mia presentazione in inglese. Thank you for amusing me, mostly. So, thank you for being here and welcome. I promise I will try to speak slowly. Uh, what we're going to do today, after my brief introduction, is talk all about how to make your Lotus Notes clients faster. And if you look around, you can see that this is a big problem, actually, and everybody has issues with Lotus Notes being slow. Regardless if your company is small, you have 100 users, medium, large. Uh, some of the largest customers I work with have 140,000 users, and everybody has the same problems. Lotus Notes has, um, can have some issues with being slow. So I want to explain to you today what exactly makes Lotus Notes um, slow, what exactly the Lotus Notes client means, which has changed significantly from version 6 to version 8. What makes Notes start slow, which, what makes Notes perform slow, and then give you some performance tips and tricks on how to solve these issues, which is why we're all here. So you heard a little bit about who I am. It's actually the number and that is wrong. I've been working with Lotus Notes in a consulting, administration, architecture uh, fashion for the past 15 years. Um, an instructor, speaker, all that good stuff. So, moving right along. So what exactly does Lotus Notes look like? Well, let me start not today in the environment that you have, but let me start at the beginning of time. At the beginning of Notes time, right? Because that's how you ended up today. So, at the beginning of Notes time, you had maybe version 4, maybe version 5. Who started Lotus Notes on version three? Let's just go crazy. Really? Three, that's amazing. Okay, version four. Okay, so the point I'm trying to make is the problems you have today didn't happen today. They happened in the beginning of Notes time. You started with version three, four, five. You then had upgrades, you had migrations. You consolidated servers. You maybe went from more servers to less servers. Um, your users changed machine, right? They got a new laptop. They got a, a more memory. So they had a migration to a new machine. Uh, your servers changed. Maybe you did a server rename. Maybe your users changed names. So these are all the different things that have happened to your Lotus Notes end users that affects their clients. So across the bookmark, um, workspace, location documents, connection documents, things like that. I'm assuming since you have uh, Lotus Notes, you're not only using it for mail, maybe you also developed applications and you deployed applications for your users to use. So maybe there's new icons for the user's workspace, bookmarks, um, maybe you recertified some people, so their ID changed, their name changed. Uh, ECLs, maybe one day you decided to have a, a signer ID, so you could properly sign all your applications. Templates, you've gone through version four templates, five templates, six templates. You understand what I'm saying. Lots of things have happened since the beginning of your Lotus Notes time, or rather your, your user's Lotus Notes time. So let's get to version eight um, of Lotus Notes. So in the beginning of Lotus Notes time, the Lotus Notes client that you started with had anywhere between four, five, six hundred files in total. 
for each of your users, um, version six and seven had roughly about 550 individual files. Well, now with Eclipse, it's a completely different story. The Lotus Notes clients that you're using today have roughly 20,000 different files, properties, configurations, XMLs. So it's completely different than what your users used to use all this time, right? And who's using 8.5 clients or newer? OK, that's not a lot of you. Newer than eight? Hold your hands up. Your end users? OK, who's still using seven? OK, you guys are using something. You're just not playing along. OK. So with Eclipse, the Lotus Notes client turned from kind of a smallish program to control into a huge program that is very difficult to control. So, and this is all important because when we talk about performance, we don't just talk about performance of a brand new installation for a new user. We're talking about performance of your users, which is not exactly uh, the same. So there's 20,000 files. There's 4,600 subdirectories. It's really uh, quite enormous. Um, there's at least 8,500 undocumented files so that IBM doesn't unfortunately tell us what they are, what they do. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever tried to upgrade embed at the same time or something like that. It's no fun at all. So in other words, Lotus Notes 8 has become much more capable, but also much more difficult to manage. You add to that, uh, there is at least 80 preference and dialog boxes. Each of them has roughly 15 settings. So in total, there's at least 1,200 different settings that your users can control or you can control for your users. Um, plugins, widgets, things like that we don't even talk about. So in other words, your job of managing your users' Lotus Notes is huge. When we talk about standardization later in the, in the presentation, this is one of the things that we all struggle with. How do you standardize something that large? How do you control? How do you manage? And then, of course, how do you manage performance for your Lotus Notes clients? OK, so let's talk about what exactly makes your Lotus Notes clients slow. Sorry, what makes it start slow? OK, so one of the things that makes an impact with regards to performance is your client version. So one of the reasons why the, the client has kind of grown into this big uh, uh, animal is because there have been a lot of functionality changes and a lot of performance increases as well. So each client version of Lotus Notes is actually becoming faster. Now, it's also becoming bigger, so those two don't always play along. But using uh, uh, the difference between using 8.5.1 in 8.5.3, there is a performance uh, increase with 8.5.3. So one of the things that impacts performance on Lotus Notes is your version, your client version. Um, another thing that is important to understand is every time you restart Lotus Notes, at least 50% of your data in the, in the data directory changes. OK, wow, that's a big deal. But it becomes a huge deal if you talk about the interaction between Lotus Notes and antivirus. Anyone ever seen problems with this? Yeah, it's ugly and it's bad. If you have antivirus on your user workstations and you're not excluding the Lotus Notes data directory, your antivirus will try to grab exclusive hold of each one of the files, 50% of which have changed since yesterday, and it will try to grab hold and scan every single one of your files. So 50% of 20,000 is 10,000 files. This is huge performance problem. So one of the things you need to go back and check is, do my users have antivirus deployed? And if so, are you excluding the data directory? Very important, especially during um, what I call the, um, the boot up storm. When you have a Windows machine and you turn it on, it takes some time to load for everything, Windows to load. And then what do users do when they get to work every morning? They start their machine, Windows starts, 
as soon as they have the Windows desktop, they do what? They click on Lotus Notes, right? So Windows has not finished loading. Lotus Notes is just now loading. Antivirus is just now loading. So really, it's very, very difficult to get good Lotus Notes performance if Lotus Notes is competing with Windows and is competing with antivirus. So one of the things you can help, make sure that antivirus does not compete with the Lotus Notes client. Uh, disk indexing is kind of the same theory is a problem if you have on the end user side your workstation set up to index your disks every time a file changes in Lotus Notes, which is all the time, the disks have to get re-indexed. So now you're competing. You're competing with Notes, you're competing with Windows, you're competing with antivirus. So make sure that you're not indexing your end user disks and you're not turning on antivirus for the data directory, which will help you with performance. Another thing that is a performance problem, and this seems kind of funny, but a client crash is a performance problem. Well, duh, yes, of course it's a performance problem because you can't perform. But specifically when you have the Notes data directory on a network drive, the impact of that is not just to the user, but it's actually um, multiplied by where the data directory is. Another thing that impacts performance is hardware. Seems obvious, but uh, I'm sure you all know, running eight anything with less than one gigabyte of memory is very painful. Uh, there's basic, there's standard, you know, you can kind of pick and choose what you want based on the hardware that you have. But it's still a problem. I still analyze client environments and you would be surprised how many users still have 500 megabytes of memory. And I'm like, really? 500 megabytes? Do you hate your users? Is that what it is? But no. So hardware makes a difference. Memory specifically, um, having an old disk. So maybe you have users that never got a new laptop. So having an old disk, having a lot of fragmentation matters as well. Uh, Lotus Notes is very read and write intensive. So if my Lotus Notes files, my data directory or the contents of that are all over that disk um, and there's a lot of fragmentation, that impacts performance a whole lot for the Lotus Notes client to go find all that data. Another thing that impacts Lotus Notes performance are startup scripts. So for those of you that have a, some kind of script that runs when the user logs in, in Windows, SMS, or whatever it's called now, uh, that can impact it as well. Again, we're talking about during the boot storm, which is when Windows comes up, antivirus wakes up. If you're running long scripts, you, it's possible that you're competing with Lotus Notes because the script is running, Windows is still loading, and now users are trying to get into Notes. And the end result is users say, Notes is slow. It's so slow. And yes, it can be, but this is what we're here to talk about. Understand why and what can you do about it. Um, actually, the number one thing that uh, when looking at just Notes that impacts your uh, startup performance is the contents of the data directory. And what I'm specifically talking about is the ODS. So what exactly is in your notes data directory or in your user's notes data directory? And again, pr they're probably not users that just started today with Lotus Notes 8.5, whatever. They're probably users that started with version 4 or 5 or 6 or 7. So the data that they carry around with them is old and outdated. Um, for a, a desktop user, they don't even need all uh, templates, for example. For laptop users, users, yeah, you may want to keep those. But let me explain why ODS is the biggest deal when we talk about performance. So ODS is the on-disk structure. It's the way that the data is uh, stored on the machine. Uh, in notes two, ODS number was 16, and then it went to 17, 20, 41, whatever. Right now, we have ODS 51. And believe it or not, we've done testing around what a difference the ODS makes. If you have even a few files with an old ODS, and I'm not talking about 16 or 17, I'm talking about 43 or 48, that actually adds several seconds of notes startup time when the client launches. It's really 
unbelievable. And the reason behind that is, yes, Lotus Notes and your server uh, understands all versions of ODS. That's not the problem. But it's kind of like speaking a foreign language. It has to translate that. So if you give a Lotus Notes client an ODS 43 database, it understands it, but it has to translate that into what it's speaking now. So there is a performance impact when you're dealing with old ODS. This is particularly a problem because how would you know what ODS the data of your users is, right? There's no way for you to really see what's out there. Uh, there's a limited way for you to upgrade what's out there, and I'll show you that next. But ODS is the number one reason why Notes is not launching. Uh, very fast in some instances and is not performing very fast as well. Also keep in mind that as of 8, the ODS does not get upgraded automatically anymore. You have to add the um, create R8 or create R85 databases INI variable and then from that point on all new databases are created with the newest ODS. But that does not change the ODS of all your old data, which is actually what the problem is. OK, so new to 8.5, um, there's slightly good news. There's a way for you to now control uh, semi-reliably the upgrade of your client data ODS. So as long as you deploy, create R8.5 databases in your notes I and I, you can use this in conjunction with a policy, which I'll show you um, in the next slide that automatically upgrades your ODS. It's not 100% reliable, but it's a great start for helping your users with performance. Yeah, so the difference with uh, having an 852 client in the impact examples, if you have as little as three ODS 20 databases, which can just be templates, they don't have to be databases that you use, but just when the Notes client starts, it has to scan through your whole data directory to see, it's like the uh, consistency checking. It's the same kind of thing. The notes client looks through the contents of your data directory to see, do I understand all the files, all the templates? So if you have as little as three ODS 20 templates in your notes data directory, which you all do, and I do too, well, not anymore, but which you all do, everybody has old ODS databases, that adds up to 10 seconds of additional startup time. If you upgrade that ODS, you do nothing else with the data, but you upgrade the ODS, you can remove eight seconds from your Lotus Notes startup time, which really is incredible. I mean, it may not seem a lot you know, to you guys, but if you think about the pain that your users feel when they have a slow Notes client, if you can do one thing and remove eight, 10, 20 seconds to their startup time, that's a big deal. Again, one of the bad parts is you may understand that outdated ODS is a problem, but there's really no easy way where you can see what your users have. But there's an ODS policy, like I just mentioned. You can uh, force an ODS upgrade. As I said, uh, policies are not always reliable, but it's a good start. So you see here on the screen, uh, there's a desktop settings policy that you can set that enables the upgrade of all local databases and upgrades that. And as long as you use that with the create R85 databases INI variable, that will work and help your users uh, in their performance. OK, so we talked about what makes Notes start slow. Let's talk about what makes Notes perform slow. And some of the things are the same. ODS, we just talked about that. Yes, we understand. So if a database you're using has an old ODS, yes, it will perform slower than it has to. Hardware, memory, again, will also not allow Lotus Notes to perform as quickly as you could if you have two gigabytes of memory or something like that. And then surprisingly enough, things in the Notes INI can make Lotus Notes perform slowly. Why? Well. If you have a uh, virus scanner reach inside Lotus Notes, of course, that can make a huge difference. So now Lotus Notes has to wait for antivirus to scan whatever files and then release that and give it back to Lotus Notes to work. But there's other things that, that can cause problems. 
Uh, people have CRM add-ons and all kinds of different things in the extension manager line of the Notes INI that can make Lotus Notes very slow. So if there's any plugins or anything like that, just do testing if you want to find out how much uh, performance degradation do you get with a plugin. Uh, take it out of the Notes INI and see what happens. Having the data directory on the network drive versus the fixed disks makes a big difference too. So this is what I'm talking about that everybody used to do in version 4 and 5, where the user data directory wasn't on my machine, but it was on a network. So it was like kind of a homegrown roaming. Did anybody do that? Where all data directories were in like H users something instead of on my workstation? Of course that adds, yeah, I see a couple of people raising their hands. Of course that adds slowness to your performance because now no longer uh, my notes client doesn't just reach onto my local disks. It now has to reach over the network to a mapped drive or something like that to access my notes data. So if you imagine doing something like an updoll or a fix up on that data, which really lives on the network, that has no way of working fast. Or you talk about doing replication uh, you have local replicas on your network drive. Well, that's just crazy from a performance perspective. <laughs> Connection documents can also impact your node's performance. How? That doesn't really make sense. Has anyone ever seen a connection document act funny for a low priority connection? Anyone ever seen that? It's a very, I see people nodding. Okay. It's this very funny problem. If you, on, an, on a new notes client, you type in the uh, DNS name or an IP address of a server, the Lotus Notes client creates a connection document for you. That is good, but that is bad because it creates it as a low priority connection document. When you have a low priority connection document, that means the Lotus, the Lotus Notes client sometimes uses it and sometimes doesn't. So what happens is the, the client tries to make a connection but is not always successful because it's low priority. And basically the, the user sits here and goes, you know, what's going on? Come on, hurry, what are you doing? And the Lotus Notes client is trying and trying and it's not always successful. And you make this problem worse. You ever seen a, a location document that has every single port enabled? TCP, IP, IP access, PX, whatever, modem ports. Each one of those ports has a timeout value. So let's say that timeout value is eight seconds. If it can't connect to one port, it tries for eight seconds and then tries the next one for eight seconds and tries the next one for eight seconds. So your end users could sit here waiting forever for 30 seconds, for a minute, just trying to establish a connection with the server. And of course, what do they say? Lotus Notes is awful. Lotus Notes is slow. Well, that's not really true, but if you don't manage it properly, yes, you may have issues. So take a look at your connection documents. Look for low priority um, things. Make sure you control your ports, and I'll also show you a policy that can help that. Network settings, we just talked about that. Uh, TCP IP compression, is anybody doing that? It's really great. It's been around since version six. I highly recommend you use TCP IP port compression. It only works if you have both the ports of your Domino server and the client, or the Domino server and the Domino server. If you have all that um, compressed, the TCP IP traffic, it will give you a faster performance by anywhere 50 to 70%. It is a little bit more harder on the server. It, the, the server does a little bit more work, but to me, Totally worth it. I notice the difference. I have a lot of local replicas, obviously, because I travel. I can tell the difference if I don't have TCP IP traffic compressed, my replication takes significantly longer. Install types impact the performance of your Lotus Notes client. This seems very obvious. So if you have a basic client that does not include the Eclipse pieces, Typically, you will get faster performance from the standard installation with the sidebars and the plugins and the Eclipse configuration. Now, I'm not telling you stop using standard. Really, what I'm saying is there's a lot of things to look at that you can do to help your users. But install type does make a difference. 
And then the ever popular roaming users. Who's using Lotus Notes roaming? Okay, my apologies. Uh, Lotus Notes roaming basically grabs your local files, your names, NSF, bookmarks, maybe the workspace, IDs, things like that. And then it essentially replicates them up to the server. So when you connect from a new machine, it replicates all that data down, which is great in theory. Except my address book is 80 megabytes. My bookmarks is, I don't know, huge. My desktop is even bigger. So really, when you talk about downloading 150, 100 for normal users, maybe only 50 megabytes of data before I can use my Lotus Notes client, that's a big deal. Your users have to sit there and wait and wait and wait and wait for the data to be pulled down. So of course, if you have a roaming user, they will have a slower experience because of all the work that the server has to do in pulling down the data. Location documents, we talked about that a little bit a minute ago, uh, but that's actually very, very important. So your location document determines what my home server is. If for some reason that is wrong, let's say I've moved. I moved from server A to server B, but admin P wasn't able to change my location document and I'm still pointing to server A, uh, except I moved to a different part and I'm, no, I'm now really far away from server A until that location document is fixed and points to the right server, I will have a very, very slow performing Lotus Notes client. And you would be surprised how big of a problem that is. And again, the problem is, the biggest problem to me is that you can't see. You don't know today who has a wrong location document, who is pointing to a server that they shouldn't be. You don't know who has all ports enabled which really to me is even worse than, than uh, fixing the problem is you don't even know if you have the problem or who has the problem. Another big problem in the location document um, is a catalog server, which seems strange, but the catalog server that I'm connected to basically allows my Lotus Notes client to look up the location of certain databases. And I'll show you in uh, one of the next slides why this matters. Because if somebody sends you a document link, or if somebody via policy is trying to deploy a new bookmark to me as a Lotus Notes user, um, the catalog server in my location document may be called in for help to say, do you know where this database lives? And unfortunately, like with other things in, in IBM Lotus Notes and Domino, the catalog server looks alphabetically, which is not always the same as working intelligently. Right? Anybody deal with Lotus Notes routing? And you know, like with, with uh, DNNs, you know, it doesn't always use logic like we would like to. It uses alphabet to uh, find the next server to route to. It's kind of the same thing, and I'll explain in just a second. And uh, yeah, so catalog server is a big problem. Okay, let me explain why this is a big deal. A user in New York, which is on the east coast of uh, America, sends a database link or a document link to somebody in California, which is on the complete opposite side of America. So we're talking thousands of miles apart. Except the user in California does not know, the, their Lotus Notes client does not know that it has a replica of that database in California. It goes up and follows the document link that it was sent, which is in New York. And from now on, this user will now use, let's say, expense reporting. The expense reporting database out of New York. Okay, do you see the problem? Your, your, your users are reaching very far destinations because of certain things. But how many times do you send a document link? You know, this is not really a good problem. Yeah, actually it is. Because the same thing happens when you send document links, uh, database links, the same thing happens when you send a policy. If I send a policy to you that creates a uh, new bookmark, that deploys something to your bookmark bar, your workspace, it uses this exact same logic. It doesn't send, necessarily send the user what you send in a policy, 
but it can. It can send the user to, you know, I don't know, Germany from your perspective, send it to the completely wrong place. So let's say, okay, but we know about this problem and we deployed a catalog server for everybody in their location documents. So I don't have that problem, right? Actually, yeah, and it kind of gets worse. If I have a catalog server, so if I'm in California, you send me a document link from New York, I have a catalog server, my client looks at, do you have a catalog server? The answer is yes. And it then looks through the catalog server alphabetically to see where is the first match of the replica ID that matches the document link or the policy I was sent. If that document link points to Alaska, because it starts with A, the notes client will say, hooray, I found the database you were looking for, and points me to Alaska. So it's really kind of a complex issue that your, your Lotus Notes client kind of redirects you to, to bad places trying to help. So the end result of this is you have users in Lotus Notes pointing to icons that make no sense. Anybody ever done like a, a DNA analysis? Anybody know what that means? Like a network and traffic analysis to figure out where your users connect to? Fascinating information. You will find that you have people connecting to China every day, like in Lotus Notes. You will find that you have users connecting to Mexico every day and you go, what? Why are my users in Italy connecting to servers in, in Mexico and China? It could very well be because of this right here. At some point, your users got a database link, a policy, something directing them to a database and it didn't pick the right one in Bologna or whatever. It sent them to the wrong one in a location very far away. So does this impact Lotus Notes performance? Yeah, of course. If you're going across uh, wide area networks that maybe have slow performance anyway. So this is a big deal. But again, kind of the problem isn't, you have a problem, but the bigger thing is you don't know what problem you have. There's no way for you to know which users have which links, have which bookmarks, which is very unfortunate. Okay. So one thing that can help though, there is a policy that can help at least with the TCP IP port compression. Is anybody using this? You should all be using this. It's really good, good, okay. So there's a desktop settings policy that you can use to compress your TCP um, traffic. And I highly recommend when you're setting something this important that you, where's my laser pointer, right here that you set the value and prevent changes. You know what your users do. They click on stuff, they delete, they change. They don't know what they're doing. So if it's something that important, turn it on and lock it down. Another thing you can do, you can with policies now, you can deploy things that denotes I and I, which I also highly recommend. Just be careful because it will do exactly what you said. So if you accidentally say the wrong thing, it will, uh, it will definitely do that. So you can do that with a, a desktop settings policy as well. You can set the INI variables to do the create R85 databases, uh, to set a port, things like that. What else can you do? Um, you can create new workstations with already configured location and connection documents. So the only thing worse than having uh, no connection is having a bad connection. If you do what I said, so if you have somebody type in the DNS name or the IP address of the server, the Lotus Notes client will create a connection, but a low priority connection document, which is a, a big problem. And this is the kind of problem that your user or you would probably not notice. All the user sees is notes is slow. Again, notes is slow they probably wouldn't call the help desk because their assumption is notes is slow. So you may have this problem where you live, but you may not know it. So just kind of be careful when whoever sets up new Lotus Notes clients, uh, who sets up the new machines, 
if you have to have a connection to get to a certain server, you might as well have them created uh, in advance because that's much easier than later on having the Lotus Notes client create connections with wrong information. Okay, performance tips and tricks. There's one really good one, the JVM properties file. You guys know about that? So maybe not so good for your users, but for you as administrators and developers, this is really great. So you have in your uh, framework RPC directory, you have a file called uh, JVM properties. You can, uh, it's set to use a certain amount of your computer's memory for Lotus Notes. So what you can do just for you administrators is you can artificially increase the amount of memory that it uses for Lotus Notes, therefore making your Lotus Notes client faster. This works great, but I always kind of say, you know, maybe don't do this for everybody because they're users and funny things can happen. But for you as administrators and, and developers, this is really great to do. There's a, there's a formula right there on the screen and you can download these slides as well. Um, you guys publish them, right? Okay, good. So you can set that to be roughly half of your processors, uh, of your physical memory, sorry, in uh, Lotus Notes. Again, this is not recommended for normal users, only admins and developers, but really that's all that matters, right? To us anyway. Um, something else that you can do, this won't help you with performance, but this will help you diagnose performance. Why am I having such a hard time? Why are things taking so long? Anybody ever worked with client clocking? When you set client clock equals one in your Lotus Notes client, it's fascinating information. Go home and try it, but only like when you're not busy or something like that. When you turn on client clocking, basically what Lotus Notes does is it opens a separate DOS window and it shows you every single thing the Lotus Notes client is doing. So you can read along and see, I'm trying to make a connection with the server because you double clicked on your mail file. And it tells you every single RPC call, it tells you how long it took, which is where the performance monitoring stuff comes in. And then of course, you can set a, uh, an output console to collect all that information. So again, this is not something you wanna do for your users, but if you're trying to troubleshoot a problem for one user or for yourself, just to understand how this works, this is absolutely fascinating information. The other reason why I use this sometimes, and here's a, an example of a, of a debug file. Um, we didn't really talk about network latency. Um, it's on the slides, I think I mostly skipped it. Network latency has a huge impact on your Lotus Notes client performance because whatever network latency you have, even it may be little, gets added to every single Lotus Notes client call going and coming, okay? For example, when you open a mail file, that's not just one call from my client to the server, and one coming back. That's actually a series of, I think it's 15 or something like that, calls to the server. So even if you just have a little bit of network latency, you add that times 15 coming and going, that can add up to be a lot of performance that you're, that you're losing. So one of the things that um, the client clocking does for you, it tells you right here, the, the network latency or the duration that every single call took, how long did this take? So if you know that, um, well, I'm a perfect example. I live on a Caribbean island out in the middle of nowhere. My network connectivity is pretty good, but to my home server in Vienna, I have huge latency. So if you have a user like that, and you can uh, turn on client clocking, you can see, you can measure their latency. You can do that with pinging too. If you ping a server, it also tells you network latency. But keep in mind that you have to multiply the network latency times whatever your Nodes client is doing to really understand the impact, the negative impact of network latency on performance of the Lotus Nodes client. Oh, well, here you go, network latency. 
So yes, you have to multiply uh, the network latency coming and going up and down. Um, so as I said, opening a mail file is not as easy as just making one call or anything like that. OK, 30 calls for opening a mail file. There we go. So if you multiply 60 mega, uh, milliseconds to download, 60 milliseconds to upload, um, you get some quite impressive numbers. So you imagine people doing this from wherever they live. And even worse, they do this for databases pointing to New York or Alaska when I live in California. This is a big deal that impacts your users. So again, you arrive back where we started, which is Lotus Notes is slow. It's always slow. Why is it so slow? OK, the next topic is a very sensitive one. I get in a lot of arguments about this. Cache NDK. Who all deletes cache NDK frequently? OK, I'm watching you. OK, I used to do the same thing. Because, OK, the client is having weird problems. I don't really understand why everything looks OK. Delete cache and DK, carry on. Except you're actually hurting your users a lot. Let me explain. When you delete the cache and DK, obviously the cache and DK is there to cache certain things that the Lotus Notes client does. And I'm not talking about you as administrators and you as developers. I'm talking about your normal users. So for normal users, this caches certain information that the client needs, like uh, contents of uh, ACLs, things like that. When you delete this file and you force the client to memorize again all the things that the user does over time, usually within the first day, you know, they always kind of use the same stuff. But maybe they use some databases once a week, once a month, whatever. You're actually multiplying the network traffic for that user by 40 times because you deleted cache and DK. OK, let me say that again. If you have a user and you delete their cache and DK, from today until tomorrow, you're increasing their um, network traffic by 40 times because instead of reaching into my local workstation, my cache NDK, and I look up memorized information, the client has to go out to the server, to the database, and ask again for all the new databases that the user is using. Does that make sense? So the more databases the user uses, the worse this problem gets. So if I use 50 databases a day, which is crazy, but if I did, this problem is, is enormous, actually, what you're doing to your users. And really, why did you delete the cache NDK to begin with? And for me, my answer is always, well, because there was a problem and that didn't make any sense. So you delete cache NDK and kind of hope for the best. So really, what I would like to suggest is now that you know how bad you're making, how much worse you're making things for your end users by deleting cache and DK. Maybe try to focus on the root cause. Maybe look at the antivirus stuff. Maybe look at disk fragmentation. Maybe look at what icons are they going to. Are they going to a server very, very far away? Maybe that's the problem. But don't just delete the cache and DK and think, this makes everything better. You're actually making things worse for a short period of time for your users. You're making notes even slower which is very unfortunate. So a quick, uh, quick visual. Some statistics that we did. Um, deleting cache and decay versus not deleting cache and decay, the amount of network traffic that was generated by doing that. Uh, for 100 users, if you deleted 100 users cache and decay, you're looking at uh, roughly about the, the difference between 150 megabytes versus 3.7 megabytes in activity and network traffic. OK, well, that's OK. Well, you kind of multiply that, and the problem just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You have 1,000 users. You're looking at 1.5 gigabytes of data that you're making your users go out and fetch versus 37 
megabytes. So again, don't just delete cache and DK. Sometimes that's the right thing to do, but for your users, it's probably not. Try to focus on what the problem is that the user has instead of just deleting cache and uh, hoping for the best. This also gets made uh, much, much, much worse if you have users that have a data directory on a network drive. Because now we're not just talking about multiplying network traffic for your local users times 40. Now you're reaching across a, a data share, a file server for each one of your users times 40. This is a big deal. It'll make everybody's Lotus Notes slower if you did that. Okay, one other thing that factors into negative Lotus Notes performance is, is actually kind of a different aspect of it, and that is non-standardization. How does non-standardization impact Lotus Notes performance? Well, configurability of the Lotus Notes client is one of its most amazing capabilities. This is the 1,200 different settings I was talking about. Wow, that's great. But at the same time, wow, that's horrible because now you have everybody, nobody is the same. Maybe you have setting turned this way. Maybe you have a setting turned that way, which makes your support of your Lotus Notes clients very difficult, especially when we're talking about performance problems because it depends on information in your location document. It depends on TCP IP port compression, all these different things. It depends on what are you pointing to on your desktop, on your bookmarks, things like that. So standardization or non-standardization is actually a pretty significant problem when we talk about Lotus Notes in general, but also performance. And most people in Lotus Notes, they just kind of work. They maybe complain, notes are slow. They don't know they have a low priority connection document. They don't know they're going to China for the expense report database. They just kind of go, oh, notes are slow, whatever, and they move on. But usually you have about 10, 20% of your users that are very vocal. You have this. They're your problem customers, your problem users. Usually, this is management, right? They're your biggest problems. They say, oh, everybody should have a quota. Well, except for me. I need all the space in the world. So uh, usually about 10% of your, of your users are the loudest. They have the biggest problems. They constantly are vocal about what's going on. So while there isn't just one thing that I can give you to fix that, if you try to standardize as much as you can on the Lotus Notes client side, it will help a little. It will help you know what the client is set up. It will help the user know what to expect. Um, things like VPs or, or management uh, particularly, don't think of, oh, well, they're special. I have to do a special configuration. Actually, it's easier if you, I'm not saying treat them the same, but configure them the same. So your job to, to working with our Lotus Notes client and diagnosing performance problems, for example, is much easier. Okay, we're almost running out of time, but uh, I want to give you a couple of uh, things to think about when talking about policies. I've mentioned a few policies, not too many. And um, there's quite a number of, of problems that I have with policies. Um, there's some great features. Uh, managed replicas is great. You can roll out I and I variables, things like that. They can help you maybe upgrade um, Lotus Notes clients. They can help manage expectations of the poor compression, things like that. Uh, but don't be fooled into thinking that Policies are 100%. I see this all the time. I walk into a customer environment and I say, you have a problem with uh, poor compression. Oh, no, 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 we don't have a problem with poor compression. We have a policy and it says compress TCP IP ports for everybody, so we are okay. But again, the problem is you don't actually know. You can't see. So don't think the policies are 100%. They, uh, in my experience, they apply to about 70% of users and you don't know who. So you can assume that they work for everybody, which may be true or maybe not. Um, 
Another thing that uh, is a challenge with policies, you can't see what you're doing. So you don't know if you turn something on, is it turned on for everybody? Is it only turned on for you, but not for you? So keep that in mind. They also are not very good at, at uh, adapting to your user's configuration. For example, I have a Mac laptop, I have a Windows desktop, and then I have several virtual environments. If you send out a policy that says, create a new local replica of the expense reporting database, well, that doesn't make sense for me as a user. On my Mac, sure. On my workstation, sure. In my Citrix or virtualized environment, does it make sense to have a local replica? No, not at all. So policies can't always adapt to what your users are doing. Very often, they can't repeat something. So once you set something and the user changes it or breaks it, the policy can't fix it again. And they're not entirely predictable. Uh, you don't always know when something will happen. But don't confuse this with me saying you shouldn't use policies. Everybody should use policies, but you need to be aware that they are not a 100% success rate uh, solution for everything you're doing. Okay, and we are running out of time, so I'm not gonna talk too much about uh, debugging policies. There's a couple of tools you can use in the admin client. You may have seen it. The policy synopsis tool to figure out what exactly applies to your end users and what doesn't. So in summary, we've touched on a lot of different things regarding your Lotus Notes uh, client performance. The biggest thing you can do for your users is find a way to upgrade their ODS. The policy I showed you, the, the Notes INI variable, roll that out to your users, even though it's not 100%, that's okay. You know, 70%, 80% is still better than nothing. So upgrade your user's ODS. Go home and do a test with this. Do a uh, compact minus C on your local workstation and look at your ODS first with your admin client and then do a compact minus C on your workstation and see the difference in how much faster your notes client loads and how much faster your notes client runs. It's really quite amazing. And also do the same on your servers. We don't talk about servers in this session, but ODS is the same problem, whether it's a client or a server. So if you're looking at your servers, look at the ODS of the databases. They really should be the newest ODS out there, which is always the fastest. It's always the most uh, performance uh, increase that uh, you can get on your servers and your local workstations. Standardize whenever possible. Keep your users on the most current versions and, and fixes. The reason IBM develops new software and gives us new new updates is because it really does get better and more capable and easier to uh, take care of and manage and performance as well. Um, and then I truly believe that any problem that you have with client performance can be solved if you use the right uh, knowledge, the right tools, and the right education. So a lot of people, when they deal with client problems, like we talked about earlier, just kind of delete cache and DK and go, I don't really know what else to do. But take a look at, at really at a few users and turn on client clocking. Take a look at their network latency. Try to really understand what's going on and see how you can help your users. And some people that have bad connectivity, bad network latency, there's nothing you can do. You know, you live on a Caribbean island, I'm really sorry, but you have bad network connectivity. It's not notes, it's the network. Or it's not notes, it's, it's antivirus. But um, take a look at your users, help them as much as you can with some of the tools as we, that we discussed. And I'll be happy to answer questions. Not now, apparently, because I'm over time. But uh, I'll be out in the hall. I'll be happy to answer questions about any particular Lotus Notes client performance issues that you have. And uh, I thank you for your time. <laughs>